earlier Thrill Seekers, and that of course was the thrilling theme from The Munsters, the old 60s TV show about a family of monsters. So I always enjoyed that song. And there used to be a band in Kent, in, in Ohio, when I was in college, named Hammer Damage, and they would do a cover of that song. And it always annoyed me because they would play it wrong. They wouldn't play all the right parts. They play dun do 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 dun do 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 They basically figured that out and they would just repeat that <laughs> and then the do 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 I guess they did that part. But they didn't do all the little filigrees and stuff. And I think I realized why, because I've been practicing that song. I think I mentioned on an earlier video, like, I had a song, but it's not ready yet. That was the song. And I've been working on it, and this morning I did it I don't know how many times and kept screwing it up. And I finally got that take that you heard, and it was close enough, so that's the one I'm going with. So there you go. The Munsters song is difficult. Okay, now let me talk about belief. And I felt initially when I decided uh, that this might be a good topic, I thought, well, I've done this topic so many times on this video channel, it must be just tedious to everybody. But then I had a look through my previous videos for the past year or so, or maybe more than a year, and I didn't see any on belief. And I was like, oh, I should have done one on belief. <laughs> so now I will. So let me tell you the uh, background to this story. This weekend was my first wedding anniversary, and I went with my wife down to a place called Oceanside, California, right? And all we knew about Oceanside was that it was an Oceanside town, and that seemed kind of neat. We, we wanted this hot out here where we moved to, and we thought we'd go spend a, a day by the ocean and it'd be nice and cool. What we found out when we got there was that Oceanside is kind of a really a military town. Uh, I don't know exactly where the base is or what branch of the military the base is from. Maybe somebody can tell me. But uh, there must be a military base down there because there's military people all over. And the first thing that clued, it, uh, clued us to that is that there were barbers all over the place. I'm like, why are there so many barbers in this town? This is really weird. You know, how many, how many barbers does a town need? Turns out you need a lot if you're a military base. But anyhow, here's the deal. Uh, okay, went to a used bookstore down there. Um, forget. I wish I could tell you the name. I've forgotten what the name was. But anyway, interestingly enough, there was a religion section, and there was a couple of interesting books in the religion section that must have been, I assume, cast off by military people. And one was this one called Jesus Wars. Uh, which is how four patriarchs, three queens, and two emperors decided what Christians would believe for the next 1,500 years. And here's another interesting one, what the Quran really says. is kind of a, maybe a dangerous book in some places. Uh, and it's by Ibn Warak. Now, I don't know if there's anybody who watches me who knows Arabic. I used to have a friend who had studied Arabic who told me that the name Ibn Warak uh, literally means something like, I don't exist. So it's obviously a pseudonym. And I have seen this, uh, Ibn Warwick uh, has written a, a number of books that are kind of critical of Islam from a scholarly standpoint. Not, not critical in the sense of necessarily being hateful of is Islam, but critical in the sense of critical, uh, what do they call it, critical religious studies in which you look at the texts very carefully and try to make some inferences about that, for example, about what historical circumstances surrounded the text, particularly in the sense, in the case of Christianity, uh, whether Jesus existed or not. And I believe this Ibn Warwick is the author of another book, which I used to have, which I don't have anymore, I don't know where it went, uh, called Did, Did Muhammad Exist? Because there there's been several books called Did Jesus Exist, which I talked about on this video channel before. And I did a video a little while ago called Did Buddha Exist? And I found out that Doug's Dharma also did a video called Did Buddha Exist? And whereas my video about Did Buddha Exist got about 3,000 views, Doug's Dharma's video video about Did Buddha Exist got 30,000 views. So what gives, people? Come on, watch my videos. Why are you watching Doug's Dharma instead? I mean, Doug's Dharma is fine, but, but come on. Anyway, so 
I, I haven't read these books. I just bought them yesterday. So I, I can't say much about the contents of the books. I read the first chapter of Jesus Wars and I leafed through what the Quran says a little bit. I read bits and pieces. So I'm not really familiar with the books and I'm not going to do a, a review of them. But the theme of the books is very apparent from what little I've read of them, and that is belief. So, I mean, it even says it in the uh, cover of this one, how four patriarchs, three queens, and two emperors decided what Christians would believe. And what the Quran says is, well, I guess the idea of the Quran is, as I understand it, that we should have literal belief in everything the Quran says, uh, specifically the Arabic version. What I've heard is anything that's been translated to another language is not considered the legitimate Quran. You have to read the Quran in its original language, Arabic, because apparently God dictated it in Arabic. So you have to read it in the right language to get it right. And so these are about taking texts which religions define as being holy and because they're holy because they are either dictated by God or somehow overseen by God. I remember a Christian friend of mine years ago trying to explain to me uh, her belief about what um, how how this worked and it wasn't that God dictated the book or wrote the book but God sort of sat up there supervising the Bible and making sure that we got the right Bible so you know you, you had to trust that God figured out what to say so the thing about this book that I got just from the intro there's a bug on it uh, is that it became very important to understand what the Bible meant because a lot of the stuff in the New Testament even well before and after it was what do they call it um, canonized it uh, it has a lot of passages that are ambiguous uh, what does he mention in here in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us the word became the word was made flesh this is the author saying that the, the first was actually from the Gospel of John, in case you didn't know. Uh, the Word was made flesh, God became man. But how does that Word relate to the man called Jesus? What does the letter of the Colossians mean when it proclaims that all the fullness of God lives in Christ in bodily form? So is Christ God? Is he a man? Is he God incarnate, like God just incarnates on earth, sort of like Krishna, the, the Hindu myth is that God incarnates on earth and Krishna and Rama and several other people were, were them, including Buddha in some versions of Hinduism was God incarnated in the flesh, and so fully God and not a person at all? Uh, or is, uh, in some interpretations of the Bible, uh, Jesus is just a person until the baptism happens, and then God descends upon him and enters him and stays with him until he's up on the cross dying, and then he leaves, God leaves, and poor Jesus is there, stuck on the cross, having to deal with what God did to him. Uh, that's that's uh, they're, they're very and there's various other variations right so the importance is what you believe now one of the things I have always found interesting about Buddhism and I feel like I've said this a bunch of times on this channel but I'm gonna say it again is that at least in the Zen stream of Buddhism that I studied belief is wholly unimportant doesn't matter what you believe. You can believe in that Jesus was God, you can believe that Buddha was God, you can believe that uh, there's a, a, a flying spaghetti monster in the sky, you can believe in UFOs, you can believe in whatever you want. It doesn't matter. The, the, the belief is unimportant. Uh, what matters is what you do. Practice. And that is the crucial thing. Now, there are versions of Buddhism in which belief is important. Sorry, my hair keeps blowing around. Anyway, um, there are b versions of Buddhism in which belief is important. And Stephen Batchelor kind of famously had a falling out with the Buddhist organization he followed. I think it was a Tibetan Buddhist organization who insisted that he had to believe Boy, I wish I could rattle this off off the top of my head, but it had to do with some kind of uh, deity that this version of Tibetan Buddhism believed in and what that deity did, and I forget what it was. Uh, and uh, Stephen Batchelor said he couldn't believe that. He also said he couldn't believe in the literal teaching of rebirth and the literal teaching of karma. 
uh, didn't believe those things. And because of that, he was, I don't know if they'd call it excommunicated, but the, the Buddhists that he was, the Buddhist organization he would he followed, said, you can't be part of us anymore and, and go away. Ask, ask Stephen Batchelor for the story because I'm, I'm garbling it. But basically the idea is belief is important. And I get this too. When I mention my kind of ambivalent attitude towards uh, reincarnation or the literal belief in rebirth, reincarnation, I will almost inevitably get somebody in the comments saying, section saying, no, you have to believe in literal rebirth because the, you're, you're not a Buddhist if you don't believe in literal rebirth. Um, let's see, uh, another one was when I, I talked about, and of course there's a hot button issue right now with uh, what's just happening in America, whether I believe that uh, according to Buddhism life begins in con at conception or not. I said, uh, you know, I, I kind of expressed, I did a video a little while ago in which I talked about a lot of the different various Buddhist beliefs, particularly in Japan, around when life begins. And somebody said, well, no, you have to believe that life begins at conception because that's that's Buddhism, uh, you know, so you have to believe that. But the version of Buddhism that I practice and study doesn't have anything to do with belief. And perhaps the best place to find this is in the Heart Sutra. And this is the San Francisco Zen Center uh, chant book, which I bought at the San Francisco Zen Center for $10 at some point. And it contains the Heart Sutra, and the, the version they use is the one which was sort of approved by the Soto Shu of Japan as their official English translation. And this sutra, which is the main sutra in Zen Buddhism, and it happens to be a very important sutra, I think, in every form of Mahayana Buddhism, as far as I know. It's really important in Tibetan Buddhism as well, I know, uh, is like I've often said this, it's like if you found a secret passage in the Bible that said uh, no God, no Savior, no salvation, no resurrection. You know, it's, it's taking the core beliefs of Buddhism and denying them. And here is one example. There is neither ignorance nor extinction of ignorance, neither old and de age and death, nor extinction of old age and death, no suffering, no cause, no cessation, no path, no knowledge, and no attainment. This is basically refuting everything in Buddha's first sermon in which he gives you the Four Noble Truths. It, it denies the Four Noble Truths. So suffering, cause, cessation, and path are very short ways of saying the, the Four Noble Truths. Uh, all life is suffering, the cause of suffering is desire, there is a way to cessation of suffering and that is to cease desire, and the Four no oh, sorry, the Noble Eightfold Path is the way to cease desire and therefore cease suffering. So this Heart Sutra says no suffering, no cause, no cessation, no path. So there you go. And it also has a couple of other things that um, it says there's no form, no sensation, no perception, no formation, no consciousness. That denies the five uh, skandhas, which is a, a important Buddhist formulation about well, in Christianity you have the soul, and in Hinduism you have Atman, and in Buddhism it says there's no Atman, no soul, there is just uh, five skandhas, which are heaps of things, and they are, uh, sorry, uh, what are they? <laughs> Let me read them. Uh, form, cessation, sensation, perception, formation, consciousness. So that's that, and, and there's some more in there, but you know, that kind of gives you the idea. So it's telling you that whatever you believe no matter what it is, even if it's the right thing, the very idea, the very, not idea, the very action of believing in something is a hindrance to understanding the truth because believing in something means you see things through a certain lens and then everything is compared to the belief that you, you have and kind of judged against that whether it's true or not. So if it fits the belief, then it must be true. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Nishijima Roshi used to say, I believe in the universe, and the universe is God. I believe in reality. So his idea was that he only believed in things that were true right at this moment. Uh, Dogen was uh, the same. He often says things in which he, he says the same message, in which he says, 
even if you believe exactly the right things, the very fact of belief itself gets in the way of true reality, of understanding true reality, of experience, re experiencing reality just as it is. Belief gets in the way. So I, I think that's really interesting, and that may be the reason that uh, Buddhism was the thing for me. The, the reason that I decided that Buddhism was the thing I wanted to pursue was because I was looking for something to believe in, just like the Ramones. I'm looking for something to believe in. Remember that song? Anyway, if you're a Ramones fan, you might remember that. But uh, so I was looking for something to believe in, and I couldn't believe in any of the religions that were presented to me. I couldn't believe that there was a literal flood that uh, that soaked the earth and killed the dinosaurs, except for the ones that were on Noah's Ark, for example. I couldn't believe that uh, Jesus Christ resurrected based on what the Bible said, because the Bible was written a long time ago by people I don't have any way of verifying. So so I couldn't believe in that. But when I discovered this religion that you didn't have to believe in, this was uh, really interesting to me. I can't believe in my hair. Uh, and so that's what I practice. So that's a very short version. I feel like I should write a book about uh, belief. I'd love to call it Beyond Belief, but I think that title's already taken, so uh, we'd have to come up with something else. But the idea that, that you don't have to believe, that there's a religion that you don't have to believe in, to me is more interesting than the old way Buddhism was presented, which was as a religion with no god. I think a religion without belief is, is a, a much more interesting concept. Okay, they cut this tree uh, last week, and things are dripping on me. I wonder if the tree is dripping sap because they cut down so many... Anyway, anyway, I got, I'm got i dripping stuff. So I'm going to get out of here. Ziggy is at my mother-in-law, my padres-in-law's place, my, uh, my uh, wife's uh, parents' place. So I'm going to try to find uh, an older video to put as his cameo. He's coming back today, so we're getting him back today. But, uh, but he's not here right now, so I'll have to put in cameo from another time. But anyway, that's it. That's my message. If you want to support me making messages like that and things that I believe in, you can go to the URL that you are seeing in the screen below, which is Hardcore Zen dot info slash donate that is hardcore zen dot info slash donate there you will find links to my paypal and patreon accounts those are my only way of making a living and i really appreciate your support it really is the number one i shouldn't say only but really it's the number number one uh number one number one way of me getting money is through your donations so i really appreciate your support but as always this is offered for free so you don't got to donate if you don't want to donate we will see you next time have a good time all the time Bye. Are you, are you begging for food? That's all I'm good for is to be begged at for food. Oh, look at that.